Hey everyone, I thought I thought I would do just a chat as I crochet video. I just think it's a very good use of my time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can also see my sweater coming together. Super happy with it. Uh, if you don't know, this is the sweater I'm making for the crochet along, which you are welcome to join. Okay, I remember that I actually have to film the next part uh, on that sweater for the cal. So I'll work on this one. And this one, I really like how it turned out. And it's basically another variation. I have to sew in all the loose ends and remove some stitch markers. But it's coming together really well. It's pretty much what I had in mind and what I'm working now on is the edging and I'm doing the same thing I did on my I don't have it next to me on my this like corally version of the half and half sweater uh, which is this really really simple lovely as you can see like scalloped edge I guess that's how it's looking and I really like it. I think it's very delicate and feminine and also very easy to make because I'm all about that. So where am I? So this is kind of like a wrap around, I don't know how you call it, like a, you know, like you wrap it around type of cardigan. And I just need to figure out what is the best way to do like a little thin cord i'm thinking just just to chain like a long chain but i don't know if that's strong enough so not sure uh, but i wanted to talk about a few things so i got a couple of questions about why i changed the name of the channel and I'll tell you about that. So now it's called Aur Aurora. <laughs> I find it very hard <laughs> to say it with an American accent or with the American R. Uh, in German, they would say Aurora. In Hebrew, I guess we would say Aurora. And, you know, the French would probably say Aurora or something like really beautiful. But the meaning of it is Dawn. And I just really, really, really love that name and have loved it ever since I watched um, you know Sleeping Beauty not that that movie is very you know I don't think it I love that movie and I've watched it many times with my uh, daughters but yeah the the lead female role is quite <laughs> well um, yeah she sleeps <laughs> for the most important part but the the cute little fairies they are very like um independent brave women so yay uh yeah so i always loved that name and when my uh, daughter was born first of all i was very very happy that uh, she was a girl because we had absolutely no names for boys that you know we we could like see ourselves naming we just didn't have any names in in our heads but I already knew that I wanted to call my daughter Ella because it's like one of my it's actually it was also my grandmother's um kind of name it was her nickname I guess I mean that's how everyone called her but I think in her ID she was Isabella and yeah it was always my favorite name and my husband is Austrian and I am from Israel and we now live in Austria and we have lived here since 2011. So whatever, when she was born we were actually living in Israel but we knew we wanted a name that would be international because nobody can pronounce my name. My name is Irit, you kind of pronounce it like Iri with a T in the end but R is pronounced differently in every language and here in Austria everyone says Irit which I really don't like but there's like no way to make them 
change the pronunciation. In Israel, it's pronounced the way that I like, irit, there's a softer R to it, and the, you know, the emphasis is on the second syllable and not on the E, irit. Yeah, so anyway, I know what it's like to have a name that is difficult for people to understand. My maiden last name was a disaster in Israel. I mean, now it would probably not be a problem because, yeah, I don't know if you know, but in Israel we speak Hebrew and there's a different alphabet and mostly, except in children's book, we don't really have vowels. We have like signs that you put like pluses and dots that you put under the letters and then you know which sound they make. But when you're older and you know the language, they kind of drop all these signs. So you just know how it's supposed to sound because you know the words. But that doesn't work with names, right? Because you don't know how a name is supposed to sound unless it's something very, very easy. So nobody ever knew how to pronounce my last name in Israel. And now nobody knows how to pronounce my first name. Uh, my point is that I also didn't want to continue with my name uh, in my like shop or designs because it's just a bit foreign and Aurora is just my favorite name oh and it's the second name of my daughter <laughs> so that's her middle name because it's also not a common name in Israel so I didn't want it to be weird when she was born we were living in Israel I didn't want it to be like a very you know weird name that nobody can say uh, although I think probably people can say Aurora in Israel. But yeah, it's it's very unusual. Like I haven't met a single, like a person named Aurora ever in my life in Israel. So that's her second name. And when I started my Instagram account and like my first blog when I was scrapbooking, that's the name I used. I think it was, yeah, or Aurora's Land or something like this, just because I really, really love the name and it sounds really pretty and you know it is kind of international so when i published now my first uh, crochet design i felt like i needed some sort of like a designer name and that's what i chose i chose aurora yarns uh, i just i just like that name uh, but it was just like just choose something, go for it, don't spend too much time obsessing and thinking about it. And yeah, my YouTube channel name was also a little bit of like an afterthought. I just wanted something that would be easy and, you know, kind of tell you what the channel was about. Uh, so it was all the crochet fun. I think I looked to see that there were no like similar names and yeah but then if i want to do more designs i figured the channel should just have the same name that i'm using for the designs not like a million different names and so that's why i changed it to aurora yarns and i think that's where it's going to stay so it's still me <laughs> but if i had a beautiful princess international name i would probably use my own name but since I don't, I changed it, or like I chose that other name for my crochet designs. And yeah, so I thought about like just doing a little Q&A, if there's anything you want to know, get to know me. I do have on my website a little blurb about kind of my story but that story actually doesn't include the crochet part of the story it's more of how i found my way back or into or to uh, art and i have to say it's it's kind of what i love about crochet as opposed to painting with watercolors, which is mainly what I've been doing as kind of a creative outlet in the last years, is that it's, you know, it's a craft. It's, I feel it's easier to master than painting. 
and also it's much easier to kind of practice. I can't really paint with watercolors and switch off my brain and watch, you know, TV, TV at like 8 in the evening. I mean, maybe people can, but I can't. I just need like too much stuff and it's a little bit messy. But I can sit with a hook and, you know, yarn and crochet something. So I can do all that stuff. I find it very helpful to distress. Not that, you know, I'm very, very grateful. I don't have a stressful life. This is basically one of my goals and one of the reasons that I left um, my profession which was a doctor. I went to med school and I finished med school and I worked uh, in hospital in Israel for a few years and then we moved here and I did all of whatever I needed to do like I studied German and I um, like went back to university so they would recognize my diploma because it wasn't uh, I didn't study in the European Union so everything is like you know the the more highly trained you are the harder it is to kind of work in your profession in a different place and obviously like I completely understand that if you accept you know doctors into your country you should make sure that they are properly trained so <laughs> the problem was that the local university where we are we're not uh in vienna which is you know just a major city and for sure they had to deal with a lot more people like me but the university next to us it's like a smaller town and they've never had anyone come from israel and so the whole process was very very long and frustrating but yeah I did that and yeah and then I just decided you know as I was doing all these things and raising my daughter and then we had another daughter in 2015 um, I found you know um, kind of how do I say this? I I started just being creative again, which I always painted as a child, but I was like, I'm going to be an architect or a doctor or, you know, something like serious. <laughs> and yeah, and then we moved here and I didn't know anyone and I didn't speak the language and I didn't know the place and I had a little girl and I was home a lot and I felt very lonely and I started, you know, you go down some YouTube rabbit hole and I started scrapbooking and I really, really loved that because it was therapeutic and... I could document our lives and, you know, with a child it's always fun because there's so many new things all the time and our travels and just like living in Europe, which is very, very different from living in the Middle East, as you can imagine. So I started scrapbooking and then that led to mixed media and that, and then I basically focused on watercolors, which are my favorite medium. And then the pandemic hit and I kind of, you know, yes, I think at the beginning it was all very stressful, but it was kind of the, the end of 2020 where like winter started and I wasn't able to travel to Israel as I have always done since we left, you know, for 10 years. I traveled multiple times a year with my kids and we could go visit my parents and my family there and my friends and everything. And I felt so isolated because I also work from home. So I really didn't have contact to almost anyone. And then, you know, going out the, the pandemic, especially before the vaccines, it just kind of took away so much of the joy in that was like socializing and being around other people. 
So all these things and like winter, which is very cold and gray here. I'm not used to that. I grew up next to the Mediterranean in very uh, moderate climate. So all these things together, I just felt I needed something to help me. And that was crocheting. And it was very, very helpful. And what I love about it is that I really feel that anyone can make stuff and there's a lot of the frustration that I felt as I was learning to paint. Uh, I don't really feel that with crochet so it's much easier I feel to enjoy this creative outlet than it was for me sometimes when I was painting because when I sat down to paint I wanted to paint something really pretty and I wanted to make it unique and authentic and special and artistic and all those things but with crochet you can still be you can still do something you can still create something and it can still be just for you it could be your one-of-a-kind sweater or hat that you made yourself um, but you don't need to like, you know, be very artistic to do that. And that's what I, that's why I really, really love and I'm very drawn now to kind of fiber, I don't want to say art, but just like crafts, let's say, that are, I don't know, I feel like you can do more with it and also... You know, with painting, I love watercolor painting and I still do that and I still enjoy that and I think it's a wonderful um, hobby, occupation, everything. It's like a wonderful, wonderful medium. It also is very relaxing and lovely. But, you know, I can't wear my paintings, uh, although I do want to actually try to upload uh, a couple of paintings to a website that creates from these images a crochet template and then see if I can make like a sweater where at least a part of it is kind of based on my painting. I think that would be really cool. I do a lot of like florals and I think that works really well for wearables. So I do want to try that. Uh, I don't know where I was starting <laughs> with this. I'm just trying to see. I want to, I wanted to tighten the, the back of this a little bit with this scalloped border so the original pattern says you have to kind of skip two stitches but I'm gonna skip three and see where that leads me so I just you know I can't wear the paper and I just have like a pile of papers and sure I can you know, and I do like hang some of them, see here a painting, but I just, I don't know, there's something really, really cool about kind of wearing your creations and I really love that because, you know, you have the joy of making it and then you have the joy of wearing it and wearing something that you're the only person in the world that has it. So my first uh, crochet pattern is kind of a basic sweater but I do hope to explore also that uh, like color work and just create more unique pieces and I actually think that the half and half sweater my first pattern uh, is very suitable for all kinds of creative explorations so yeah, I really feel like it's just the beginning and also what I've learned in these years of, I don't know, like I don't want to say founding, finding myself because I feel that term has been like used to death, but I feel like when it comes to where your creative juices want to flow, um, you should just go with it and not fight it and... I really struggle to do anything if my heart is not completely in it. And so I feel like if 
you know, if my soul wants to crochet right now, then that's what I should do. And it's all part of, I don't know, the journey. Uh, I think of a lot of artists that, you know, kind of dabbled or or created in several disciplines, if you want to call it, like a lot of painters also or sculptures. And so all these things, I feel like I'm not abandoning, you know, my watercolors and neglecting them if I'm crocheting, but I prefer to see it as just parts of the big picture let's say it like that and I don't know where it's going to lead me and I also think that kind of going with what you feel like it is also part of what's going to get me to that place of making things that are authentic that are uniquely me so it's kind of where I am about that and yeah, I don't know. I have my main uh, YouTube channel, which has been around forever. It started with scrapbooking videos. It was just my way to connect because, as I said, I was completely alone in a foreign country. In the language I didn't speak then and speak poorly now. <laughs> but <laughs> just like being on YouTube was a way to be a part of a community. So I started with scrapbooking, then it went into uh, watercolors. And that's my main channel, which has my name uh, and a lot more subscribers than here. But I didn't want to do like one channel for everything because I actually didn't want the people who were there for the watercolors. That took me like years to build and grow that audience. I didn't want them to feel like, okay, you're now completely shifting from watercolors. We don't have anything to look for here so I just thought it was a bit much and also my videos on my uh, smaller crochet channel here they are more um, casual I would say I try now to plan more my watercolor videos and here I just like to come and ch chat about what I'm doing what I'm making what I'm buying which does remind me that I did place an order with Fildal. This is a French uh, yarn manufacturer. I think they make most of their yarns in Italy. And I saw they had like a couple, they have one of my favorite yarns, which is this one. I've talked about it many times in the past. This is Phil Gourmand, and this is the softest like super unique, like hairy, super, super soft yarn. Um, sadly, it is completely synthetic. I wish it was a little bit of like, had a little bit of a natural fiber in it, but it still makes really, really lovely garments. I personally love that look. And uh, I've shown my beloved sweater that I made from it here many times. So even though this is made with Canisian, Tunisian crochet, Tunisian crochet, uh, which makes a very, very heavy fabric. Uh, it's it's very, very light because it uses a, a large hook and a very light yarn. So, so um, yeah, and they had, I was going on and on in like different videos about the color range of this yarn, the Fil Gourmand, and they have a, actually really beautiful colors. This is what I really love about uh, many of the major brands in Europe, like Filda, like Katia from Spain, and yeah, a few others that I feel they make really lovely and kind of aesthetically pleasing, stylish color ranges. But many times, like a lot of the yarn has still a limited color palette. I'm not talking about like basic cotton yarns or the kind of the cheaper acrylic yarns usually have a large color range but kind of the more special yarns um, they tend to not have a ton of colors and I love this particular yarn but there are a few holes in the range that I really really felt I wanted to fill like a mint color so they added a mint color to their range and I ordered it and then I also discovered another uh, yarn that they had that I didn't know existed which is called Phil Bonbon 
and I think when I uh, looked at their website, you know, I use Google Translate because I can't read French and I think it translates to, to like Phil Candy or something like this, so it's very confusing with the names but it's like kind of a blown out yarn so very very light and airy and it is a cotton blend so only like 30 something percent uh, i think like egyptian cotton but it looks beautiful and it looks similar to all of those gorgeous uh kind of like thicker not thicker but you know those airy so yeah i guess thicker but still light uh, yarns that I see around that are that usually have wool in them and I don't use wool uh, Although I do want to say something about that. So it looked really beautiful and they had a sale on uh, One of the colors which is this lovely purple. It's a color. I loved 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 when I was a kid and I think it would be amazing to make a sweater uh, with it and it was yeah, it was reduced and they said you only need five skeins to make a sweater like 42 size sweater and i usually wear 38 or 40 so i don't know if if i might even need just four but they had it on sale so five skeins of that gorgeous bon bon yarn was 20 dollars so for 20 euros so four euros uh per skein which i thought was a really nice price and yeah so i ordered it for the first time from their website in france no idea how long it's going to um, to take to get to me in Austria. Not that France is so far away, but yeah, we'll see. I think, I don't know, I don't think it's flying here. I think it's, it's coming um, <laughs> by via trucks and roads. I really don't know. Look, look what happens when I talk <laughs> and crochet at the same time. Not a very good a multitasker. I think that's all I have to say. Sorry if this was a bit like rambly, but uh, yeah, if you want to know more about anything I mentioned, then uh, feel free to leave me comments below, or you can also find me on Instagram and chat with me there if you prefer. Um, yeah, really, really happy with how this is turning out and it kind of, I'll show you when I finish it. If you have any advice on what I should use for, I just need like some strings to be able to tie it around me. That's the idea of this uh, kind of envelope cardigan type of thing. So I don't know. Um, I tried doing just like a row of you know some some basic stitch i didn't like how it looked so i'm i'm really leaning towards a chain but i thought maybe i should use just like a double strand so that it's just a bit more substantial and not just a single strand i think that's what i'll do but yeah and make sure you join the cal if you haven't already i'm recording this I don't know the date, but I know that the swatch video is supposed to go live today. So probably you're watching this video after it's already gone live, like that that video. So grab your yarn of choice, a yarn that you love and you want to wear and want to make a sweater out of it. And join me on the cal because... I really think that, you know, I don't want to sound like cocky or arrogant, that's really, really not, it's really not me, and especially as someone who just wrote one pattern and designed like one pattern, however, I have made quite a few wearables, and I think that this kind of construction that I show in the cal and in the pattern i think it's a kind of a game changer for a lot of people and it can really really help you make sweaters that fit you very easily without any surprises so you know exactly what you're getting when you're done with the sweater don't you hate that when you make a beautiful sweater and then you kind of seam it together and 
the fit is all wrong and things are bunching up or too tight or too big or too loose. I mean, that happened to me so, so many times. And I don't want that to happen to people, myself included. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it. I will, I think I'm very close to actually finishing this. See, I have here my little scalloped edge and soon I will have this scalloped edge. They will meet in the middle and then I'll add my chain and then I'll be done and I'll show you how it looks. I'm really, really happy with it and I have to say that I really enjoyed, this is using Ferris wheel. The colorway is called Pink Marmalade. It's not usually my color thing because there's brown here, but I do like it. So that's it. I hope you were kind of crocheting along with me as I was chatting. And I will see you soon in another video. I will keep you updated on all that French yarn that is making its way to me. I got, uh, yesterday in the mail, I got a catalog from my favorite yarn, like online yarn shop. It's called Junghans Wolle. Uh, there's an Austrian shop. I think there's also a German shop. And they had like some of the summer yarns, which, I mean, I love actually making winter clothes, even though with summer, it's sometimes just, goes faster because you can make tank tops and all kinds of like smaller things but I really love you know sweaters and floofy yarns and all those things but if you don't use any animal fibers then summer is definitely the time where you know all the cotton comes out and viscose and bamboo and linen and all those things so they had some of the summer yarns and it was very exciting and I have already a few <laughs> yarns I want to try. Um, I'm also thinking about just like designing kind of a spring collection. Uh, let me know if that's like something you enjoy. If you usually buy your patterns just like, you know, one at a time or or you really like the idea of like getting a few patterns. Obviously it you know, it'll be like more patterns for the price. Um, or if that doesn't really speak to you. For me, I actually find it hard because many times, you know, these packages have, you know, like accessories, which I'm not a big fan of. So I'm not sure, but I kind of feel like it would be really nice to kind of come up with a concept and then make some fun pieces that go with it. So I don't know, I'm really, really enjoying just like brainstorming that idea and what I could do with it. I really want to combine fibers and play with textures. You can follow my pins on Pinterest and see everything I pin and you might kind of get an idea of all the things that uh, like draw me in and I'm curious to explore. So I'm almost done with my edges, our meeting here. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye bye.